I'm Victor Tron. I'm, I'm originally from Hungary. Uh, I had been living in London for a few years when I came across uh, Ethereum. I, I, I had already been um, for quite a while in the Bitcoin space. I'd been mining myself and a bit of hacking around stuff. But I'm, I'm coming from uh, like my, my career hat is it's more like into computational linguistics, AI, machine learning, generic computing. I was working to, for the BBC at the time and when I heard like Gavin Wood is, is giving a talk about Ethereum and at the, at the Coin Scrum meetup, and that was that was just basically a month after Vitalik uh, announced uh, the white paper in Miami. So it was, uh, it was really probably one of the first public presentations about Ethereum, and um, I happened to have a chance to go there in Hoxton Square, London, and I was absolutely you know blown. By, by the prospect, I immediately understood the, the, the consequences of if it's possible. But of course, I kind of smiled like, you know, I mean, it's, it's a great project. Obviously, it can, cannot work. So it, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I, I thought it's like great ambitions. And then I, when I delved into it like more and more, and like I talked to Gavin, I, I started, I actually had my first contribution to the C++ code, which was, which happened to be my first and last contribution of like one liner to that code base. And then, Slowly, slowly, they started to understand that wow, this project is really a bunch of geniuses, and it actually really stands on its legs, and uh, really, it, it is really possible. And it was uh, like a big realization. Like slowly, slowly, like you know, delved into it and understood the math, and, and really, it worked out. And it was, it was a you know big realization. When, wow, it's like what's what's possible, and you know, my my fascination and my enthusiasm has not dwindled one bit since <laughs> and I'm, I'm still I'm still really really uh, blown away by the idea and I feel the luckiest guy on earth to be honest to work on this project so I started basically just to contribute as, 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 as you would to any open source project like from very early on it was January 2014 and you know after half a year when the pre-sale happened I was lucky enough to be offered a job officially I was one of the first employees of the foundation uh, but that was through Jeff, Jeff Wilke, who's uh, building the Go client. And uh, so I became the, one of the first developers of the, the Go client. And, you know, since then I went through, like, basically contributing to um, various bits of the code base. And slowly, slowly I kind of honed in on, on the Swarm project, which I'm currently you know, the main developer of. So what's the what's, what's the blockchain? Let's let's start with a very short. So, blockchain is basically gives you uh, secure computation, and uh, uh, in a sandboxed environment, it has to be sandboxed because exactly every node has to uh, calculate uh, exactly the it has to reach exactly the same output from the same input. It has to be uh, completely de de deterministic uh, computation. It uh, the the generalization of Ethereum. Um, like, ge basically, general like during complete computations, uh, involve uh, storage as well. So you can actually do uh, storage on the blockchain, which means that smart contracts can have um, their own storage and they have some, 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 some persistent layer. However, exactly because these computations, including the storage, have to be replicated on each node in order to be secured. Uh, storing uh, data is very, very expensive. So typically what you want to do is to store only the minimal, minimum possible uh, data, ideally just a, just a root hash of some, um, you know, some, or maybe not, not so technically speaking, just, a, you know, some digest of, 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 of a huge data set, just to, um, you know, secure the, the, the current state of some, of some database or, or state of your contract, whatever is relevant. But it, it, it has to be, you know, very small amount of data, exactly because it's replicated on every, every computer, it's extremely expensive. And uh, also withdrawing that data is, is relatively slow. Um, so here, here's when, when Swarm comes in, or in, in general, the, the generic idea of, of, of storage becomes a problem. So Swarm is, 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 is determined to solve that problem and using peer-to-peer, -peer, um, you know, decentralized storage and, and, and content de delivery uh, techniques and technology, 
tries to solve the problem of, of efficient data retrieval and efficient data distribution. So basically Swarm is the BitTorrent on steroids. I'm not an expert on VM and virtual machines and languages, so you know obviously I'm not like really an expert developer on the core client. So if you think of Ethereum as the word computer, like it's, a, it's, a, it's the secured computer of a um, large peer-to-peer -peer network, then maybe you can say that Swarm is the is the word hard disk. So it's like one component of this uh, the overall vision of the Ethereum ecosystem. Very early on, the, the, the founding fathers of Ethereum like realized that that um, this generalized blockchain can be, you know, backbone of the of the, of the new internet. And basically, they, they realized that the way people wanted the internet always, like as a decentralized, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer network, never actually manifested, never never actually materialized. Because and and the, the way the web works at the moment, that like you know data is uh, segregated in, in, in silos operated by uh, private entities. It's really kind of a broken internet. It's not how we ever imagined it. And although peer-to-peer -peer technologies, um, like including file sharing, you know, you must have heard about Napster, like when it started, these technologies have been existing for 10 to 12, uh, 10, 20 years almost. And yeah, there's fantastic research and progress in these fields. Uh, it seems that they there's a, there's a missing piece of the puzzle, and uh, what they always really needed is some sort of in incentivization uh, layer, which makes the, the collaboration of, of peers sustainable and reliable long term. And so it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic marriage um, of like extend the peer to peer technologies with, with, with the blockchain, where smart contracts and you know, the, the accessibility of value and value transfer directly uh, can be a perfect platform to um, program incentive systems, basically um, to automate um, the, um, the ways uh, in which peers co can collaborate and, um, and steer collaboration towards, uh, towards uh, goals and, and operation that's, that's healthy and, and conducive to the, to the desired uh, workings of a network. In particular, in terms of a file sharing system or you know, it's a decentralized uh, storage system, what, uh, what's really crucial, for example, is to, is to have low latency um, availability and um, for, so for example, for interactive web applications, it's very important that, that, you, um, that you can download you know, files and basically websites in a, in a reliable fashion with low latency, as well as being a reliable storage, like for, you know, have reliable long-term storage, even for unpopular content. And uh, it seems that the, the blockchain is a, is a perfect platform to program and to, to implement incentive structures that um, you know, basically imp implement exactly that.